DMG channel to your home for sports talk. I'm Bill Morgan. Certainly a big sports week in Northeast Ohio as the Cleveland Cavaliers get ready to tip off the NBA Finals. The Cavaliers battling with Golden State as the Cavaliers try to snap that decades long drought of a professional sports championship in the city of Cleveland dating back to the Browns winning a title back in the 1960s and before that the Cleveland Indians in the 1950s, the Cavaliers have never won an NBA crown. Coming up on this week's show, we'll break it all down as I'm joined by sports writer Jim Haynes from the Times Reporter and Denny Trimmer from the WJER sports team. When you want the latest on what's happening in high school sports and with TV2 and WJER Radio, check out WJERTV2.com. Past episodes of Sports Talk and more, and you can find it 24-7 online at WJERTV2.com. Coming up as this week's show continues, we'll talk with Denny Trimmer and Jim Haynes on TV2 Sports Talk. As a parent, we always want what's best for our child. In the case of one child, it may be going off to college. In another case, staying home and going to college. And yet, in other cases, it could be going right into the workforce. But how will they have the skills to do that? Buckeye Career Center has been the answer for one of our daughters. She's learning to do things with her hands that are going to be very valuable for her in the workplace. And we're excited we have Buckeye to thank for that. Adults who return to Buckeye Career Center to continue their education usually have one goal in mind. They want the opportunity for a better job. The fact is, adult education programs at Buckeye Career Center are less expensive and provide greater opportunities for job placement following graduation. It's your future. Get the facts. Buckeye Career Center. We put people to work. Find out more about your future at BuckeyeCareerCenter.org. This episode of Sports Talk is brought to you by Jay Dempson and Sun Concrete. After this rough winter, you may need to repair or replace your patio, sidewalk, steps, or driveway. If you're considering any of these projects, give Jay Dempson and Sun Concrete a call at 330-795-0169 for a free estimate. Keep your home looking its best with Jay Dempson and Son with over 55 years of combined experience making satisfied customers. Welcome back to TV2 Sports Talk on DMG Channel 2 from Time Warner Cable. I'm Bill Morgan. This week, the Cavaliers tipping off the NBA Finals as they try to break that longtime City of Cleveland jinx from championships in professional sports. As promised, joined by Jim Haynes from the Times Reporter and WJER Radio's Denny Trimmer. DT, like just about everybody else who grew up in this neck of the woods, uh, it's been a long time waiting. As a matter of fact, for you, it's been a lifetime. It's never happened in terms of a Cleveland pro team winning a championship. Is this the year? I would say that this is the year just because that fan in me is saying we've got to do it this year. I don't think I expected this to happen. Uh, I think when LeBron announced he was coming back and the, the roster that they had in place, the slow start, uh, the roster flip over that they've done, getting rid of the Dion Waiters of the world and bringing in Shumpert and J.R. Smith and Mozgov. And then the second half of the season and the way they burned through the playoffs with and through the adversity of the injuries and the suspension of... Uh, but the fact of the matter is, because I didn't have that weight of expectation of they've got to do it this year from the beginning of the season, assuming they wouldn't, now that we're here, I'm totally enjoying this run and uh, I wouldn't be surprised. And I think the biggest thing, or the biggest reason why, they're seen as the underdog. And for all those folks out there that say, LeBron can't win the big game, the weight of expectation is too much, there's no pressure on the underdog. So you're gonna see a fire burning in him in this series uh, that, that's gonna take things to a, a, a new level. I, I really like their chances. Jim, Danny talks about uh, that change in personnel sort of mid-season uh, with Timothy Mozgov. And I don't know if I should admit this or not. I'm not sure I ever heard of that guy prior to the trade. Uh, Shumpert and J.R. Smith coming in. How surprised are you at the difference that trio has made in this team in the second half of the year? 
Well, I, I, I'm really surprised, actually, but uh, when, you, when you stop and you, you look back at where JR and Iman Shumpert were, you know, they didn't have very big roles in New York. Um, so I think they relish the fact that, okay, you know what? New York didn't want us, so we're gonna go to Cleveland and we're gonna make ourselves known. And boy, have they ever. I mean, their play, you know, each one of them has stepped up at one point in this postseason and really made a difference uh, on this team. And Mozgov, um, you know, he gave that force in the middle uh, with Anderson Verja, who really isn't a true center, uh, but he gives you that force in the middle where he can uh, alter and block shots, and uh, obviously he can score when needed. Talking Cavaliers this week on TV2 Sports Talk from DMG Channel 2 on Time Warner Cable. I'm WJER Radio Sports Director Bill Morgan, joined by to my immediate right, Denny Trimmer from WJER Sports, and to his right, sports writer Jim Haynes from the Times Reporter. Uh, LeBron, when you look at uh, what he has accomplished, DT, headed into this series, um, I saw the numbers as uh, the other series, the conference finals closing out, that LeBron becomes the first player since uh, guys have played on that Boston Celtics dynasty, back to Bill Russell and Casey Jones and guys like that, to be in the finals this many consecutive years. I think that speaks to his legacy. Oh, five straight NBA finals uh, with different cast of characters, though they had the, the big three in Miami at the core. You know, you're still adding pieces, parts around. And now, again, with that roster turnover, you're thinking Kyrie and Kevin Love going to take us there. Kevin Love's been gone since the Boston series. Kyrie Irving's been damaged goods. LeBron's greatness is most recently being seen in how he is allowing the other players to step up and find their rhythm. J.R. Smith, the shooting nights that he's had. Matthew Dellavedova, who? <laughs> really? Matthew Dellavedova. Um, has, you know, he closed out the Chicago series for all intents and purposes. Uh, LeBron's ability to facilitate uh, and let those guys do their thing. And, and I think now that Kyrie is back in some form or fashion, he's not 100%, but when he's on the floor and the spacing that affords, because he can still knock it down, he gives them another J.R. Smith-like guy that can shoot it from beyond the arc. He's not going to give you the burst and the creativity as much, but boy, when LeBron is running the point on that thing with those guys on the wings and, and throws Shumpert in that mix as well, that's when they're at their best. And I really think you talk legacy. I think we already knew where the legacy was going, but this might be, and they might end up not winning the championship, this might be the best season he's ever had. TV2 Sports Talk on DMG Channel 2 from Time Water Cable, talking Cavs as Cleveland gets ready to tip off the NBA Championship Series. The first two games at Golden State, you'll be able to hear all the action on WJR Radio beginning on Thursday night at 8.30 with Cavaliers Radio Network pregame show, tip off time at 9 o'clock. Time now to put Jim Haynes right into the fire. Over the weekend, Bill Lambeer, the former Detroit Pistons great, said when asked who's the better player, LeBron or Michael Jordan, he said, without a doubt, LeBron. Jim, is that a surprise? Do you buy into that theory? Um, yeah, it is somewhat of a surprise. Um, you know, I, I grew up watching Michael Jordan and you know, just seeing the greatness that he exuded on the court. I mean, game after game, and how many times did you see it in the finals and in the playoffs where he would just simply take over the game? And nobody could stop him. Everybody knew who was getting the ball, but he still made the plays. Um, LeBron is a great player, the, you know, the greatest player of, of the latter part of my life here. Um, but uh, boy, to, to say LeBron's better than Michael Jordan, I think uh, LeBron's got to get a couple more rings yet before that can be said. I think Bill Lambeer, of course, uh, being one of those bad boys in the Pistons, probably never really a real big fan of the Chicago Bulls. DT, your thoughts on Mr. Lambeer's comments? They're, they're different players. It, it's tough for me to compare them. If you would say, was Patrick Ewing better than Akeem Olajuwon? You can go right to the stats and say these guys played the same position, about the same number of years. I, I can look at that and say apples to apples. I think when you look at Michael as an apple, LeBron's an orange because LeBron plays a different style of basketball. He's not just a pure shooting guard. He's more of a, a, a small forward who plays point. You know, Michael was points per game, points per game, points per game. I'm going to get 40, but at that last shot, I've got the ability to pass it out to a Steve Kerr. 
LeBron thinks distribution first and getting my, my teammates involved. He's much more Magic Johnson than he is Michael Jordan in that comparison, uh, though he'll never set the assist record uh, for point guards. He has already set it for small forwards. Uh, I just think it's hard to look at both of them and you know say is one better than the other because they did totally different things on the floor. You can talk about the Cavaliers all you want to, but of course, with this being the NBA Finals series, you got to talk about the other guys, and uh, they are incredibly talented and uh, been the NBA's probably best team in terms of the record department just about all season long. And we'll take a timeout on TV2 Sports Talk, and as we come back, we'll talk about Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors. It's all on the way when this week's NBA Finals Preview Edition of TV2 Sports Talk continues. The sound of silence and cars were cutting like knives in a fist fight. And I found you with a tear in your eye, your head in the curtains, and heart like the 4th of July. You swore and said, We are not, we are not shining stars. This I know, I never said we are. If you're lost and alone, or you sing. Like a stone, carry on. May your past be the sound of your feet on the ground. Carry on, carry on, carry on. We are, we are, we are shining stars. Carry on, we are invincible. We are who we are. WJ. And TV2 would like to introduce you to a new website, WJERTV2.com, where you can watch exciting high school football, soccer, and volleyball replays from TV2 Sports on your home computer, smartphone, or tablet. Also, watch the latest episodes of TV2's original programming, Sports Talk, The Garden Girl, The Not So Shy Chef, Off the Record, and Medical Minutes, as well as catch up on local community news and search for local businesses. So make sure to check out the new WJERTV2.com community website where everything's local. TV2 Sports Talk, your home this week for a preview of the Cleveland Cavaliers in the NBA Finals. I'm Bill Morgan with Jim Haynes from the Times Reporter and WJER Sports' Denny Tremor. Golden State, of course, the opponent. The Warriors begin with the first two games of the best of seven series on their home floor. Jim, tell us a little bit about the Warriors minus Steph Curry. Obviously, he's key to what they do, but who do they have in their arsenal besides the NBA's MVP? Well, uh, outside of Steph Curry, they have Clay Thompson, who, who, which Golden State may have two of the best pure shooters in, in Curry and Thompson. Uh, but but Thompson, uh, you know, took a good blow. He has a concussion. He might not even start game one. So, uh, but honestly, outside of that, when you look at their team as a whole, yes, they're, they're very talented. Obviously, they wouldn't be in the NBA Finals if they weren't. But if you can slow one of those two down, um, you know, Cleveland has a good chance to, you know, really surprise a lot of people and maybe not even make this a, a lengthy series. But uh, outside of that, they don't have, they, they have a decent inside game, but that's where Cleveland has the advantage, in my opinion, is their inside game uh, with Mozgov and, and Tristan Thompson. What a, you know, what a season he has had, especially in the postseason. But uh, so Golden State worries me a little bit if they can't, if the Cavs can't guard the perimeter. Uh, but I think uh, you're going to see uh, some surprising things from the Cavaliers defensively. Danny, Jim brought up a name that has been tremendous, especially in the most recent series, uh, Tristan Thompson. Uh, what play you've seen from him on both ends of the floor, and uh, probably uh, the biggest thing that you've heard about him, especially in terms of from the national perspective, his abilities on the offensive glass. The other thing you hear more than that, he's going to get paid next year. Uh, this was a contract year. He decided at the beginning of the season that he wasn't going to take the team's offer, which he felt was a little low, and he was going to make it that dream season. And sure enough, he's lived up to everything he needed to be to get that big payday at the end. He has been phenomenal, hearkening uh, memories of Dennis Rodman 
and the way he attacked the offensive glass. He's not the idiot that Rodman was or the sideshow freak with the colored hair and the earrings and, and everything else. He's a blue collar, lunch pail, Northeast Ohio kind of guy, which is why the fans are in love with the way he's playing right now. It is the Cavaliers and Golden State tipping off Thursday night. And of course, you'll be able to hear it on WJER. Game two coming up Sunday and that one on 1450. Follow the Cavaliers with the radio call of John Michael and former Cavalier Jim Jones on 1450 AM. DT, we talked uh, with Jim about uh, the matchup between these two teams. Um, how do the Cavaliers, who have shown a propensity, especially in the second half of these playoff games, uh, to go small and uh, like to get up and down the floor a little bit more. You don't see Mozgov play too much in the fourth quarter, for example. Um, how do they take advantage of uh, what I think, and I would agree with Jim, is a perceived advantage in the post? I, I think you kind of turn the tables on what you were talking about. I think you stay bigger longer. I think the, the advantage you have with Mozgov and, and Tristan on the floor gives you something that in Bogut and Iguodala, the Warriors aren't up to the same par. As soon as you go small and move Tristan to your five, you become a quicker team, you become a, a faster team running the floor and probably a better spaced shooting team, but that also plays into what Golden State is doing because Bogut's not going to see that much floor time either. He's their equivalent of Timofey Mozgov. So uh, I would think, like Jim, take advantage, get Mozgov what you can get out of him early. And you've seen that some, especially in the Chicago series, uh, of getting him some tries down low, trying to get the, the easy offense going that way first. And, and then by the end of the game, you've got what you needed out of him. Hopefully, you've used that to build a cushion. Uh, and then you can stay small and do the things you want to do with the good ball handlers and free throw shooters on the floor. Denny Trimmer from WJER Sports and Jim Haynes from the Times Reporter, our guest on TV2 Sports Talk. Uh, Jim, you had a great column this past Sunday in the Times Reporter sort of breaking down the Cavaliers and uh, where they may go in this series. For folks who maybe didn't get a chance to catch, catch that, revisit it for us. Um, yeah, basically I was just kind of uh, recapping you know, what the Cavaliers have done in the postseason and who has stepped up in the postseason. And, and Denny, you mentioned his name earlier, Matthew Dellavedova. Uh, to me, he is that guy that you love him when he's on your team, but you can't stand him when he's on the opposing team. He's that guy that uh, is like that mat that won't go away. You know, he's just pesky. He, he's, uh, he's a hard worker out on the floor. He gives you that hustle. And a lot like uh, Tristan Thompson, the, the fans just absolutely love him. Um, so, you know, we've had so many people step up in this postseason. And Matthew Della Vidova, you know, he was at best uh, an average NBA player during the, during the regular season. Uh, but boy, he's, he stepped up his game in the postseason. And I'm, I'm anxious to see who they put on Curry defensively. Um, you know, people are saying, well, put Kyrie on him. I don't think Kyrie mm -hmm. can stay with Curry because if you watched any of that um, Houston series, number one, Houston was very slow in rotation defensively. And Curry don't need a whole lot of space to get off a shot. And what he likes to do, Curry likes to do, is he'll set his own screen by using the ball handler. He'll go behind the ball handler at the top of the key, and that's all the space he needs to separate himself from the defender, and he's yanking up three. So, It'll be interesting to see how that uh, defensively the Cavs um, guard uh, Steph Curry. One of the things that uh, I enjoy about Golden State, and I guess you shouldn't say you enjoy anything uh, <laughs> when you're a Cavaliers Radio Network affiliate, but uh, Denny, I, I love Steph Curry's game. I mean, if Steph Curry walked It's a lot on, like your game. Uh, I, I had no <laughs> game. That's why I started talking about sports and not playing sports. <laughs> But uh, if Steph Curry were to walk into the studio right now, other than being maybe a shade taller than you, uh, if he was in the Giant Eagle aisle three and he walked by and somebody said, that's the NBA MVP, he doesn't have that physical presence that you would normally see out of some of these big NBA guys. You're, you're so right on. And, and you think about his, his, road to the, his road to the NBA, Davidson? Steve Kerr fell in love with him when Kerr was the general manager of the Suns. And he drafted like four spots behind Golden State and was trying to trade up because he thought the Warriors were going to take him, couldn't get him, and now six years later reunited. And Kerr, who was that type of player, same size, quick moves, you know, quick trigger on the jump shot, brilliant accuracy from beyond the arc, knew what he had and has taken 
what he knew he had in himself and said, boy, if I only had Steph's athleticism, I could have taken my game here. Use that as motivation and really challenge Steph to, to develop his all-around game and just not be the shooter, but to be the, the ball handler and, and the guy that can set his own screen and, and a much better defender this year than he's been in his previous five seasons. So he's a wonderful talent. Does he look like your paper boy? Yes, but he's an assassin out there, and he, he, you're right, he's fun to watch. It is all a part of what will be happening at the NBA Finals, tipping off on Thursday night. Coming up, as TV2 Sports Talk continues, Jim, Denny, and I will break it down and give you our picks for the NBA Finals. Who's going to win it in how many games will the Cleveland Cavaliers finally break that City of Cleveland professional sports jinx? It's all when TV2 Sports Talk continues on DMG Channel 2 from Time Mortar Cable. I'm John Maselli, and I would like to welcome you to the Sunnyside Store Restaurant. Since 1999, we have served over 500,000 meals. We specialize in steak, pasta, and the patron special, ribs. The Sunnyside Store is located at 5495 North Worcester Avenue in Peral. Hours are Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday, we open at 9 a.m. for breakfast. For more information or to schedule an event in the banquet room for groups of 40 or smaller, call 330-364-5474. This is John Maselli inviting you to the Sunnyside Store Restaurant. Hope you're enjoying sports talk here on TV2. Coming up next is Medical Minutes. We bring in a variety of local experts to talk about health topics. All on Medical Minutes right after Sports Talk. TV2 Sports Talk this week, talking Cleveland Cavaliers basketball as the Cavs head for the NBA Finals, all beginning on Thursday night. We'll be at Golden State coverage on WJER Radio, 8.30 Thursday evening with the pregame show, tip-off time at 9 o'clock. Jim Haynes, David Blatt, your thoughts? A difference maker, a guy who's just sort of delving out minutes between LeBron and the other guys coming off the bench. Has he been a positive influence? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, my, my, my original thought during the, the regular season is LeBron is the head coach. You know, but I'll tell you what, David Blatt has made the right moves in the postseason. I mean, when you think about, you know, what he's had to overcome as far as injuries on his team, the suspensions that we talked about, um, he's put all the right pieces in the puzzle. And make no mistake, LeBron has a big say in that. But I think, I think uh, it, for David Blatt's first NBA coaching season, he's already made a defining moment in these, in these uh, playoffs. So now it's for for the whole ball of wax here in the NBA Finals. We'll see how that, ha how that goes. Danny, when this team struggled a little bit late in the regular season, I guess uh, there was uh, some stirring, and this happened a couple of times during the regular season. Is David Blatt the guy? Will David Blatt get kicked to the curb after this season, no matter what happens? They're in the NBA Finals. We don't know if they're going to win the NBA championship. Is there any way, when this season is all said and done, that the Cavaliers front office makes a change in the head coaching position? According to Dan Gilbert, there is no chance that there will be a change in the head coaching position. According to talk radio, John Calipari might be interested. You know, all of LeBron's friends and Nike associates and USA Basketball upper-ups are all in play. I, I, don't, I, just don't, I think it would be foolish. I, I think what Blatt has done, coming, you know, he's obviously been a head coach for a number of years overseas, having never coached an NBA game before. Same as Steve Kerr. Right. So two head coaches going to the finals that have never coached a season before in the NBA. Blatt first had to figure out how to tackle the super ego prima donna LeBron. And LeBron has worked with him to, to make that doable. The way he has handled the other guys, I think, is what endears him to Dan Gilbert uh, and how he has been able to to pull the right cards on, well, we'll play Della Vadova instead of starting Mike Miller anymore. Right. Yeah. Um, and getting those other guys reps and 
picking the minutes and not putting J.R. Smith back in the starting lineup but keeping Shumpert out there after Smith comes back from his two-game suspension. I think he has really done a nice job in the postseason, and that's going to galvanize his uh, ticket for at least one more. The Cavaliers doing battle with the Warriors, we have mentioned. That game one Thursday night, game two Sunday, that of course also in the Oakland Bay area. Jim, do we really need two days off between games? I, I know why we're doing it. It's for this. It's for TV. But, I mean, do we really need a two-day break when we're not changing cities? Um, no, we don't. But I, the reason I like it, I like it personally, is I think it keeps the players fresh. And I think it makes for a better game. You know what I mean? Especially when they got to travel back, when they play Sunday and then they come back Tuesday. So they have a quick turnaround coming from the West Coast, playing on Sunday, they have a day off Monday, and then they play Tuesday. That, that game three, to me, is going to be pivotal no matter who's up at, at what juncture after two games. But uh, just because of the travel that's involved there. DT, if this were the NHL, and yes, I know it's not the NHL, but maybe... You're the Cavaliers. You would send Kendrick Perkins into the game at some point in time, and on a drive to the basket by one Clay Thompson, Perk may accidentally give him a little whoop forearm to that head or the shoulder region. How dare you suggest something like that? I'm sure that's <laughs> been discussed somewhere off the record in the Cavaliers' locker room. But um, would you ever envision anything like that happening at game time? No. Not in a game one. If Clay Thompson goes off in a game one, starts off hot in the game in the second game, and it looks like Golden State is pushing their way out, then perhaps you send the goon in to belly up on him for you know a couple possessions. Uh, I just I, when you brought Perkins in in the Boston series and he set that hard screen, that was great. What happened next, though, not great. So you've got to really pick your spots because I think. At this stage in his career, Kendrick Perkins has really embraced that mob mentality of being that enforcer, and that can really put you in a pickle with, in a close game with technical fouls and possessions and whatnot. So you really got to pick your spots, though I don't think the Cavs are even thinking like that right now. Oh, I'm sure there's sure no discussion not. like that. We're going to wrap up by talking about who each of us, whether it's Jim or DT or I, think is going to win this series and how many games uh, by no particular order. We're going to start with Mr. Haynes. Jim, your thoughts on what happens in this series? Um, well, I think it's critical that the Cavaliers take game one. I think they need to set the tone, uh, and that's, that's going to be a tall task. I mean, Golden State rarely loses at home. Uh, I think if the Cavs take one, uh, one of two there in Golden State, um, I think the Cavs win in six. I think it's going to end up being a physical series. I really do. Uh, the Cavs have not played a non-physical series so far in this postseason. Um, I think there's going to be a couple game winners. Uh, and I think I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm excited for this, more so than I was in 07 against the Spurs. Mr. Haynes says Cavs in six. Mr. Tremor. If the Cavaliers are to win, it has to be a short series. I think the longer this thing plays out, the more tired Kyrie's legs are, the, the shorter your rotation is, the more you're counting on guys deeper into your bench because of the, the physical limitations that we have right now with, with injuries. That bodes well for Golden State. So there has to be a sense of urgency. If it's not game one, you've at least got to get that split out there. I like the Cavaliers in five, even winning that fifth game on Golden State's home floor, but if it goes longer than five, 50-50 proposition. The Cavaliers and Golden State tipping things off on Thursday night. That leaves us uh, with my pick, and I guess if I could sandwich in between these two guys, I would, but you can't. It's either five or six or seven or a sweep. It's not going to be a sweep. I think the whole key for the Cavaliers is how LeBron plays offensively. It's a well-documented fact that, especially in the postseason, his three-point shooting has been Gene, Jim Haynes-esque. It's been <laughs> miserable. So I think what you've got to do is have him spend more time uh, driving to the bucket and taking 15-foot jumpers and not 23-foot jumpers. And when he does penetrate, which he's done all throughout the postseason, look to kick as the defenses collapse on him. 
if he limits his three-point shots and the Cavaliers continue to do defensively what they've done defensively, I think the Cavaliers win, but in seven full games. Thanks to Jim Haynes, thanks to Denny Tremor as we preview the Cavaliers in the NBA Finals. And again, you can hear all the games on the radio on our sister radio station, 1450 WJER. And then join us next week for another edition of TV2 Sports Talk on DMG Channel 2.